Hi friends and welcome back to Amanda Muse. So today what I want to share with you are my thoughts on sleepovers. I recently shared that Dean and I made a decision, maybe more so me, that I'm just not on board with sleepovers and a few of you had asked for my reasons why. I think a lot of us are in a similar stage of parenting right now and I thought I would just share those with you today. I should preface this video by saying that I grew up being allowed to go to sleepovers and I haven't had any particularly bad experience. You know, the usual discomfort that you feel when you're at a sleepover if you remember when you were a teenager. Um, you know, one of those can be peer pressure, but I've never had anything like any of the serious potential risks happen. However, looking back on it, there was the opportunity for those things to happen and it's just a freaking blessing that it never did. So something that changed for me when I think about sleepovers in general is I must have been reading an article, probably something on Facebook, where there was a police officer that was um, interviewed about it and he had given his quote and he basically said like, you know, if he could tell parents anything, he would say never do sleepovers. And it got me thinking about like, oh my gosh, the potential risk. You know, you're putting your trust and faith in other people when the reality is you don't really know what goes on behind closed doors. Is it, you know, healthy to go around thinking that there's like monsters and scary people everywhere? No, but you know, with my own life experiences and just being aware of my surroundings, it's safe to say that monsters don't always look like monsters. When I look at the statistics, it's safe to say that there would be somebody that you would know who's in your surroundings that you've become familiar with in some way that could be a potential threat. 10% of the time it's from a stranger, 40% of the time it's from a family member, and 50% of the time it's from a trusted non-family member. I am not interested in increasing that risk in any chance. So, kind of bringing it back to where I am right now, I was telling you my kids are four and six. If you've been watching a while, you know who they are, Esme and Jack, and they're little, and they also co-sleep like it's their job. So even at this stage in the game, like they, they, I can't get them to sleep in their own beds. What, what am I even thinking that they would sleep in someone else's house in a different bed? I will say that I'm actually not comfortable with having my kids sleep over at a, at a relative's house without me there. I do not think that there is anyone in my family that poses a potential threat to my God, but I just, for one, I don't, I don't know, I don't like the idea of my kids sleeping in a house without myself or Dean there or someone I really, really trust being there. I just think that at nighttime, you know, it's when kids are the most vulnerable in terms of like just feeling maybe tired or they miss home. But you know, when you wake up and you're feeling sad or lonely and you really want a parent there, it's an interesting thing to share an opinion when I'm so firmly adamant about one particular way. One thing I will say, it's safe to say that my opinion on sleepovers will likely change as my kids grow up. I feel like they're too young right now for me to trust that they're gonna be able to hold their own if things get weird. And by things getting weird, my biggest concern is abuse in any shape or form, specifically sexual abuse. Because here's the thing, I would rather my kid be PO'd at me for years, okay? Be mad, do your thing, I'm not your friend, I'm your mom. Rather than have to deal with the trauma of a sexual assault. I have had my experiences with sexual assault. Some I have shared publicly with you, and some I haven't, because it's part of my story. And it takes years to recover from that trauma. And I can honestly say, at nearly 34 years old, there are times where I still feel like I'm dealing with the after effects of a trauma I experienced from someone I really trusted. And so I don't want my kids to go through that. I cannot protect them from everything, but you're damn sure I'm going to prevent certain things from happening. I am so paranoid or conscious of that kind of thing that I actually don't let my kids over at their friends' houses if I know older siblings are gonna be there, if there's older siblings with friends, if there's family members I'm not comfortable with. Heck, if there's a backyard party, you're not there unless I'm there. So if you invite my kids to places, expect me to snuggle up on in with ya. I'll sleep over if you want me to. Like literally, I'm not even joking. I will sleep over. <laughs> we can have a mom sleepover party the same night, but I'm just not comfortable with my kids being in a Strangers home without me there. You know people, but you don't know them fully. Do you know what I'm saying? So let's see, I wanted to quickly see, I pulled up some articles to kind of, that were talking a little bit about this. Let's see, 
here, here, here. I think, I think there's, oh yeah, there's a book here called Bringing Up Girls. I don't know too much about the book. I'm not so sure I like the title of that book, but James Dobson was saying that he feels that children shouldn't participate in sleepovers. And he's quoted saying, you know, that the world has changed in the last few decades and it is no longer a safe place for children. Pedophiles and child molesters are more pervasive than ever. And that is why parents must be diligent to protect their kids every hour of the day and night. Until you have dealt with little victims as I have and seen the pain in their eyes, you might not fully appreciate the devastation inflicted by molestation. It casts a long shadow on everything that follows, including future marital relationships. Therefore, parents have to think the unthinkable in every situation. The threat that can come from anywhere, including neighbors, uncles, stepfathers, grandfathers, Sunday school teachers, coaches, music instructors, scout leaders, and babysitters. I'm going to add, because it seems here that he kind of implied that the monsters are men. That's not true. I've heard of assault victims being victimized by women, so let's just paint it as adults, okay? But then again, there's also young people. Okay, predators are a predator. I don't think it's based on gender here. But even public bathrooms can be dangerous today. So, you know, I agree with his concerns and, um, I, to and I totally do. And I just, I really feel like Esme and Jack can be mad as hell but I get final say until they leave my house or at least they're paying rent or whatever comes first. Is everyone gonna agree with me on this? No, but in conversation, I have spoken to people who have also made this decision with their life where they're not gonna allow their kids to have sleepovers and or nor kids sleep at their house and vice versa kind of thing. But one thing I thought was really cool, which was a really good workaround is a friend of mine who's grown now has children of her own, told me that when she was a teenager, her parents were like against sleepovers like crazy and maybe more for religious reasons and that's totally cool too. But what her parents did do is they let her go to the party and then they'd pick her up around 11.30 at night. And so she still got to have like most of the fun. She still got to like play around, do the like pre-sleepover fun. But when it actually came down to like the sleeping part, her parents preferred that she sleep at home in her own bed. And I like that. I would be on board with that idea of a workaround for a sleepover because you're not really missing out on the fun and yeah, it might be awkward and you might be mad as heck when your mom shows up at 11.30, but you're sleeping in your own bed. I can monitor your safety and I'm good with that. You know, I think that it's unrealistic to think that you're gonna be able to protect your kid from every situation. I appreciate that this changes from age to age, but that's where we stand. And I would love to know how you feel about this. So let me know in the comments below. And I would also love to know if you've decided to not have sleepovers, what are some of the workarounds that you do to kind of like, you know, make good with your kids in this situation? Let me know below. If you're new here, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. Stick around. I put out videos three times a week, and one of those is a weekly vlog where you kind of come along with us for the week. So that's it, friends. You know, I haven't said it in a while, but keep it real, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.